In this video, we're going to look at factoring by grouping. So factoring by grouping, we need to have a very strong understanding of factoring by factoring out the greatest common factor. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, please watch the video on factoring by factoring out the greatest common factor. A very quick review of that, if we have two terms, so here we have AX and BX, we factor out the greatest common factor. In that case, they both have a factor of X, so we would pull out X, and then we would multiply it to whatever's left from each term. So when I divide X into AX, I'm left with A, and when I divide X into BX, I'm left with B. So we would end up with X, the greatest common factor in front, times the pieces that are left over from each term. This can look a little bit funky. So with factoring by grouping, we need to be very comfortable with the fact that sometimes terms, or excuse me, factors, can look a little strange. Here, in the second example, we have two factors in the first term. So this is the first factor, A, and the second factor is X minus 2. In the second term, I also have two factors. First, I have B, and second, I have X minus 2. So the question is, do those two terms have something in common? Do they have a common factor? And the answer is yes. It's very awkward, but both terms have a factor of X minus 2. So just like we did where we pulled it out and put it in front, we're going to do that here as well. Our GCF is X minus 2, so I put the GCF in front, and now I'm going to put the pieces that are left over here. When I divide A times X minus 2 by X minus 2, I'm left with A. When I divide B times X minus 2 by X minus 2, I'm left with plus B. So then the final factored version here would be X minus 2, remember that was our GCF, times A plus B. It's a little bit weird, but just be comfortable with the fact that we can have factors that are little polynomials inside parentheses. If you can do that, you're going to be great with factoring by grouping, and you'll be great with all of the factoring from here on out. So, yay! Let's look at some examples of factoring by grouping. Here's what we do. We have 3x minus wx plus 6 minus 2w. For factoring by grouping, we're going to group the terms as we see them. So I'm going to group together the first two terms, and I'm going to group together the second two terms. When I group together the second two terms, I need to be very, very careful. If there's a plus sign here, all is well, right? Because a plus sign doesn't really change anything. This would still be a positive 6, and this would be a negative 2w. If that was a minus sign, I would need to be super careful about what I do, and you should talk to your professor about uh, their technique for handling this. Uh, in the next example, you'll see my technique for handling it. But for now, we're not going to have to worry about that, so whew, one thing less to worry about. Okay, so I have two groupings now. In the first grouping, 3x and negative wx, I'm going to pull out the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor will be x. So I factor it out. I divide and put the leftovers inside parentheses. So this would be 3 minus w. Plus 6 and 2w, those have a greatest common factor of 2. So I'm going to factor out the 2 and then divide it into both and put the leftovers here. That would be 3 minus w. So what I've done is I've taken four terms, right, there were originally four, one, two, three, four, and now I have two terms. This is my first term, and this is my second term. And now we're going to factor by factoring out the greatest common factor. Do those two terms have a factor in common? And the answer is yes, they have that 3 minus w in common. So we pull out the greatest common factor, and then we write what's left in the parentheses behind it. So we, if we divide out the 3 minus w, I'd be left with x plus 2. So this would be the completely factored form of what we were originally given with 3x minus wx plus 6 minus 2w. Let's look at another example. So b, we have x squared, my, uh, excuse me, x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 3. Okay, we're going to almost do the same technique, but there's one trick because of this minus right here. So first, we're going to group the first two terms together. Now when I go to group the second two terms, what I personally do, I'm going to change the subtraction to plus a negative. Now when I go to group, I don't have to worry about this changing anything. I can just put this in parentheses, and I still have my, my 3x is negative, and my 3 is positive. If you have a subtraction sign, and then you just put this inside parentheses, You've now changed what was given to you. You were given a negative 3x and a uh, positive 3, but if there's a negative in front of here, you all of a sudden are making this 3 negative. You can't just change math problems. That's actually not allowed. Um, 
So we just want to be really careful when we see that negative in front of a parenthesis. Uh, I usually just remove it and then I'll deal with it later. Um, but talk to your professor, maybe they do something different, I'm not sure. Okay, so here in our first grouping, the greatest common factor between x cubed and x squared is x squared. We're going to divide each of these by x squared. That would leave me with x minus 1. And then here, because my first term is negative, I'm going to factor out a negative. And 3x and 3 have a common factor of 3. So I'm going to factor out a minus 3. So when I divide each of these, I'm actually dividing by negative 3. Negative 3x divided by negative 3 is x. 3 divided by negative 3 is minus 1. So again, I went from four terms down to two. These two terms have something in common. So there's the first term. Here's the second term. They both have a common factor of x minus 1. So x minus 1 is our GCF. Then I open up the second set of parentheses and put the leftovers in there. Here we're left with x squared. In the second term, we're left with minus 3. And for now, this is the furthest that we can take this uh, factoring. So that would be our factored form for letter B. For letter C, we have 3x to the fifth minus 12x cubed plus 12x cubed minus 4x. Now, you might think to yourself, wait, I can just combine those, and then it's negative 11x cubed. You can, but we actually, it's ideal to have an even number of terms when we're doing factoring by grouping. Something else that I should really have pointed out before, and now that I'm finally here and realizing that I need to point it out, I'm going to now, and that is anytime you're doing any factoring, whether it's this video, videos about trinomials, special products, always look to see if all terms have something in common. If they do, you should always factor that out prior to any other type of factoring. So here what I notice is that every single term has an x. So the first thing I need to do is factor out an x. And just because I have all the space up here, I'm just going to work up instead of down. So I'm going to factor out an x from all four terms. So when I divide out an x, that's going to leave me with 3x to the fourth. That will be minus 12x squared. This will be plus x squared. And this will be minus 4. OK, now that I have that, I'm going to switch colors here just so that we can see, because my parentheses are going to get all mangled here. Once you factor out the greatest common factor, you need to keep writing it, or you need to know that the final answer should have that, that number or variable out in front. Um, but for the rest of the problem, you just focus on what's inside the parentheses. So now inside the parentheses, I have four terms. I'm going to do factoring by grouping. I'm going to group together my first two terms here. I'm going to group together my second two terms. This is a plus sign, so I don't have to worry about anything weird there. And now this x that was the original greatest common factor, we leave it there. We keep writing it, but we otherwise ignore it. So we can just keep writing it, but it doesn't matter. And then what you can do is you can open up brackets or parentheses just to say, hey, this is supposed to be multiplied by everything. Now here in our first grouping, we have 3x to the fourth and minus 12x squared. Those have a GCF of 3x squared. And we're going to divide this by 3x squared. We'll be left with x squared minus, divide this term by 3x squared, we're left with 4. Then plus x squared minus 4. So x squared and 4, they don't have anything in common. What I strongly suggest you do, though, is the very rare time they actually, I'm sorry, they do have something in common. They have a 1 in common. And this is that very rare time where you should actually write the 1. Because if you don't write the 1, you might not correctly factor. Because if you don't see the number there, you might not necessarily include it. It's really important that we include this 1 in the next step. So I suggest when you're factoring, if the GCF is 1, write the 1. And then this would say x squared minus 4. OK, focusing inside my brackets here. So I'm going to bring down my GCF, but I otherwise don't, uh, uh, the original GCF, but I otherwise don't care. Inside the brackets, I now have two terms. Those two terms have a common factor of x squared minus 4. So I'm going to factor out the x squared minus 4 from the two terms inside the parentheses. Here I'm left with the 3x squared. Here I'm left with that 1. See, if that 1 wasn't there, you might say, oh, there's nothing there, and put nothing and close the parentheses behind the 3x squared, and that'd be very bad and wrong, and don't do that. So we need to make sure we include that plus 1 here. Close parentheses. And because this is a video on factoring by grouping, we would be done with the factoring by grouping. If you see something here that could be further factored, 
kudos to you. Yes, we could actually further factor this, but that's not what this video is about. So this is going to be our final factoring by grouping factoring.